Hey everyone, I wanted to talk about polishing acrylic today. So I've got these two lenses here, and uh, these were cut on a CNC lathe and didn't have an optical finish when they came off the lathe. So let me tell you what I found today. Before starting on the lenses themselves, I wanted to have a few test coupons to see uh, what these techniques would actually do. Uh, no use wasting the lenses on uh, things that aren't going to work. So I chose uh, some cast acrylic that's most almost certainly the same material that the lenses are made out of. I bought the lens material from McMaster and it's cast acrylic. And this is also cast acrylic from McMaster. Uh, but it's possible it's slightly different because the lenses were cut from a rod and this is obviously a sheet, so there's a chance that it was a different uh, blend of acrylic. A note about different kinds of acrylic. The stuff that you get with brown paper on it like this is almost certainly cell cast, meaning that the acrylic is formed in basically a big tub. I think the tub's probably made of glass, so it's nice and flat. And the uh, polymer uh, polymerizes inside the tub so that it takes the form of the cell. Um, this is sort of the best stuff out there. There's also a continuous cast and extruded acrylic, which often has like a blue plastic cover on it. Uh, one of my friends said that those, that's actually better for laser cutting, but for, for pretty much every other operation, like you know, milling, drilling, tapping, machining, sanding, it's not as good because the uh, mel melting temperature is lower and some of its other properties aren't as desirable. So anyway, so we got our cell cast acrylic here. And to start with a baseline, I used the fly cutter in my mill just to flatten all the coupons down. And then for some of them, I uh, sanded to 600 grit using water. So my favorite technique is to put a piece of glass down on the bench and then put the sandpaper down on that and then move the piece over the sandpaper while keeping plenty of water going. So this technique is good for doing flat things because the glass will make sure that the sandpaper is evenly supported on a, on a truly flat surface. One of the coupons I sanded only up to 600 grit, and one of the others I sanded to 600 and then continued on to 2000 grit. I also cut one on the table saw just as a reference point. I put a microscope objective in front of my camera in place of the lens and took some close-up shots. So here's a close-up of the fly cut surface. Here's a close-up of the 600 grit. This is the 2000 grit, and this is the saw cut. I wanted to try three different polishing methods. The first method is probably the most standard. I used just a novice plastic polish, and this is just a very fine grit suspended in a water-soluble uh, binder, basically. And uh, each lens or each coupon only took maybe a few minutes, maybe four minutes of polishing. And normally I would start with novice number three, which is the coarsest, and then move to Novus 2, which is the finer one. And Novus 1 is actually a cleaner, that's not actually a, a polish. Uh, but I didn't have any Novus 3 on hand, so I just went right to 2. Another method of polishing is to use the flame of a propane or map gas torch. And the trick is that you have to move the acrylic at just the right speed so that the surface will melt and form a, uh, a smooth surface via surface tension, but not hang on it so long that it starts to burn and bubble. So I, I'm a little rusty, I actually haven't done this in a little while, but I managed to get a few pieces done fairly well. This technique works a whole lot better on the edge of a piece of acrylic that you've um, finished with a router or with a table saw, but, but generally it's not known for having great optical finish. A new technique that I haven't tried until today was the use of methylene chloride vapor to uh, smooth the surface down. So the idea here is that when the methylene chloride vapor touches the surface, it actually melts the acrylic or dissolves it a little bit. And then again, surface tension will pull the surface flat and uh, the, the vapor leaves. And so you're left with just a flat surface of acrylic. There's a pretty interesting video on YouTube that I'll link to in the description that shows this being done to um, a custom acrylic windshield for a race car. I ran into a few difficulties. One, the um, Vapor, you know, you have to start with a fairly large amount of liquid, so I had to refill my flask here a few times because it, it ran out. It, it only bubbles, it only boils for maybe five or ten minutes with that amount in there. Second, it seems like the optical quality increases rapidly and then actually declines a little bit, and holding the piece of acrylic in the vapor stream for a longer amount of time doesn't yield any additional improvement. So sort of like the flame polishing, it doesn't really um, get all the way to optical 
quality. It seems to sort of go past the point very easily, maybe. I'm definitely going to experiment with this a bit more, but at least at first blush, it seems like this technique is not quite as good um, as the polish, which we'll see later. But, uh, you know, it's definitely worth experimenting more, even though it seems like initially it's not quite as interesting. Okay, so here are the results. This is the fly cut surface with the Novus polish on the left, the flame polish in the middle, and the vapor polish on the right. Here's the 600 grit sanded surface with the Novus on the left, flame in the middle, and vapor on the right. And here's the 2000 grit surface, Novus on the left, flame in the middle, and vapor on the right. So as you can see, it's really no contest. The uh, 2000 grit sandpaper is really the magic ingredient in this whole mess here. Um, so when I sat down to do the lenses, uh, that's basically exactly what I did. I, I did 600 grit first just to get rid of the tooling marks and one of the CNC pieces had uh, deeper tooling marks than the other. So I sat down with a, a light focused very uh, closely on the surface that I was working on, and I could actually see the tool marks disappearing as I wore, them, wore it down with a 600 grit. Uh, then I moved up to 2000 grit and the Novus number two and ended up with these lenses here. It's sort of difficult to use the camera to give uh, an accurate representation of how good the optical quality of these lenses are. I would say that they're not quite commercial quality because you can still perceive some scratches in the surface and the contrast is just not quite as good. But this is a picture of a 150 line per inch code strip, uh, just to give you an idea of what sort of resolution is possible. Of course, chromatic aberration is um, one of the biggest problems with these things since they're, they're uncorrected. It's just one index of refraction here. The spherical aberration shouldn't be quite so bad because these are actually aspheric lenses and they've been designed to reduce that uh, aberration. Also I should add I, I would have used 1200 grit between the 600 and 2000 if I had it. I just I checked my shelf and realized that was out so I just went from 600 right to 2000. If you're planning to glue two pieces of acrylic together and want an optical junction between the two, it's actually not necessary, in fact undesirable, to polish the surface to a, an optical finish before applying the solvent weld. I've found that it's really much better just to go with a sanded edge, or even just a really fine machine surface. Um, you'll get a better, uh, if there's more tooth on the surface, the solvent will have more surface area to grab onto, and you'll, you'll still get an optical joint because the uh, solvent will form a bridge between the two pieces and, and it'll still be a, a continuous piece of acrylic through there. Um, sometimes the polishing it will leave a small amount of polish in the joint and that, that is not good for um, optical clarity. I'll probably do a video on solvent welding acrylic at some point. I actually posted some stuff to my website long ago before I was posting to YouTube. Okay, see you next time. Bye.